In this video, I'm gonna tell you about the most useful collision functions in GameMaker. If you followed any tutorials before, you may have seen functions like place meeting and move and collide. So let's talk about these functions and many more functions that you may not have heard of, but are actually pretty useful. I'm gonna divide this video into three sections, beginner functions, intermediate functions, and advanced functions. Even though you can use any of these at any level, all the functions I'll show in the video are in the manual under GML code reference, movement and collisions, and then collisions. So make sure to go read the manual after this video, as you should always do. The most basic way to do collisions is the collision event. So I'm going to talk a little about this and how collisions work. But if you want to jump straight into the functions, then you can skip to this timestamp. So if you add a collision event in OBJ player, and this event is with OBJ coin, then this event is gonna run when this instance of OBJ player collides with any instance of OBJ coin. A collision is counted when the mask of an instance overlaps the mask of another instance, and this mask comes from the instance's sprite. So when you're setting up a sprite, you can change its mask. By default, it's gonna be a rectangle, but you can make it another shape or a rectangle with rotation or make it precise so it follows the shape of your sprite, but that is gonna be slower. Going back to the collision event, it's gonna run every frame that a collision or an overlap is found. So it's gonna continue to keep firing as long as the instances are overlapping. So this can cause issues if you're trying to set an alarm in the event where it constantly keeps getting reset so the alarm event never actually fires. You can fix this by just destroying one of the instances or using a boolean variable to make sure that the alarm is only set once. Now in a collision event, you get the other variable which refers to the other instance that you found in the collision. So in this case, because the event is in obj player and we're looking for a collision with obj coin, the other variable is gonna be the coin instance that was found in the collision. So then in the event, you can do anything with this other instance, like destroying it or changing a variable inside it or anything else. There is a function called move and collide, but I'm not gonna go deep into that because it's not really a collision function. It's more of a convenience function that moves the instance by a certain amount on the X and Y axes while checking for collisions against a certain object. We have a video on using that function to make a quick platformer, so you can watch that after this video. But for now, let's move on to the actual collision functions. Place meeting is the most basic and commonly used function in GameMaker. You may have usually used it in the step event to check if there is a collision with something in this frame. It takes a position and an object. To check the collision, it'll move the current instance to the new position, check the collision, and then move it back. It returns true if a collision was found or false if there wasn't. This is most useful for movement because you just want to know if there is a wall where you're going or not. So here's an example. In the step event, I have a variable that stores how much I want to move on the x-axis, which is horizontal. So if I press right, this will be 4. If I press left, it will be minus 4. Then I use place meeting to check for a collision where I'm going to move by giving it my current position plus how much I want to move. I'll check with the wall object. So if this returns true, there was a collision. However, if it gets false, then I'm free to move and I'll add the movement value to the instance's x position. Just to quickly mention, all of the functions that I'm gonna show in this video also take a tile map ID in addition to an object. So if you have a tile layer in your room, you can get its tile map ID in code by using the layer tile map get ID function. Then if you pass that ID into the place meeting function or any other collision function instead of an object, you can check for collisions with that tile layer. You can also pass multiple objects and tile maps at once into one function call by passing an array containing all the objects and tile maps you want to check against. So keep that in mind for all the functions we talk about in this video. They all take objects, tile maps, and arrays containing both. Now position meeting is the same as place meeting with one major difference. So place meeting, like I mentioned before, checks if the mask of the current instance is colliding with the mask of another instance. But position meeting simply checks if one pixel or point in the room is touching the mask of another instance. Using place meeting to check for a coin will look like this, with two masks overlapping. But using position meeting will instead look like this, 
without only checking if a point is overlapping with the mask of a coin. This is useful if you want to check for a collision at the mouse's location or you want to quickly check if there's something below the player's feet without having to use the whole mask to do the collision check so you can just use a point. There are these two functions called instance place and instance position. Instance place does the same thing as place meeting where it checks the instance's mask versus another instance's mask and instance position does the exact same thing as position meeting where it checks a point versus another instance's mask. The only difference is in the results of these functions. So where place meeting will only give you true or false based on whether a collision was found or not, instance place will give you the instance that was found during that collision. For example, I can run an instance place check for a coin instance at the current position and store its value in a local variable. Now if a collision was found here, this is gonna give me the instance that was found, otherwise its results will be equal to the no one keyword. So if we then check if the return value is not equal to no one, which means there was a coin found, we can then do anything with that instance like destroying it. This means you should use the instance place or instance position functions if you need the instance that was found in the collision. Otherwise, you can just use the place meeting or position meeting functions which simply give you true or false. There are functions in GameMaker for checking collisions using a shape. So you saw instance place that uses the mask of the current instance to check for collisions and instance position that uses a point. Beyond that, we have functions like collision circle that checks if the given circle is colliding with any instances of an object. So it takes the position and radius of the circle to use for the check and then the object or tile map to check against. And just like the instance place function, it returns the instance that was found in the collision or it returns no one if no instance was found. Before I talk about more of these functions, they do take some extra arguments that we should talk about. There is a precise argument, so if you want to check against instances that have precise masks enabled and you want the collision check to use those precise masks for the check, then you should set this to true. Otherwise, if you're checking against instances that aren't using precise masks, then you can just set this to false. Then there is the not me argument. Let's say you're doing a collision check against obj coin inside an instance of obj coin then during the collision check the instance will just find itself because it belongs to the same object that you're checking for so in that case you can set the not me argument to true in which case the function call will ignore just the current instance and will look for any other instance belonging to this object of course if you're just checking for an entirely different object you can just set this to false so some other functions in this category are collision ellipse collision line, collision point, which is actually very similar to instance position, and collision rectangle. That just like collision circle, just using different shapes, you can read more about them in the manual. GameMaker also has functions for checking if two shapes are overlapping. So these are only shape versus shape, there are no instance masks involved. So these are the six shape versus shape functions. Starting with point in rectangle, this checks if the given point is inside the given rectangle. Point in triangle and point in circle are then the same and the function name just describes what it does. All of these are just going to get you true or false based on whether the point is inside the given shape. And then there's rectangle in rectangle which checks if two rectangles are overlapping. And this is interesting because these functions can give you three different kinds of answers. You'll get 0 if they don't overlap, you'll get 1 if the first rectangle is completely inside the second rectangle, and for any other case of overlap, you will get 2. Then there's rectangle in triangle and rectangle in circle, and these also work the same, where they'll get you 1 if the rectangle is completely inside the second shape, but for any other overlap, it will be 2. All of the collision functions in GameMaker that return an instance instead of just true or false have variants that end with list. So one example, you know the instance place function checks if you're colliding with any instance of another object and it'll give you the first instance that it finds in collision. But what do you do if you want to get all of the instances that were found in the collision? But if you are colliding with four instances of say an enemy and you want to know all of them, that's where you would use the instance place list function 
because this is what allows you to actually get a list of all the instances that were found in collision. Let me show you how to code this. You make a DS list first, ideally in the create event. In the step event, you call this function, let's say, to check for all the enemies that you're colliding with. You pass it the list that you created, and then you tell it whether or not the list should be sorted by distance, so the closest enemy is first. It will do the collision check and all of the enemy instances that it finds. It'll put them into that DS list that you passed it, and the function itself will return how many instances were found. So if it found 5 instances, it's gonna put those 5 instances into the list that you gave it, and the function itself is gonna return the number 5. So you can then do a for loop to iterate over the list and do whatever you want with each instance in the list. You should then destroy the list in the cleanup event so there's no memory leak. Also keep in mind that if you're doing this every frame or repeatedly, then you should clear the list before calling the function because it only adds the instances that it finds into the list. It doesn't remove anything that's already there in the list. And so this can cause issues if the results from the previous frame are still there in the current frame. If you look in the manual, you'll see all of these collision functions have list variants which work the same way. You should read the manual to fully understand how these functions work and I recommend experimenting with them. And that's all for the video. Make sure to check out the other tutorials we have. And remember, keep trying, keep failing, and keep learning. That's the only way up. Bye.